Here's a close-up look of the cam phaser and the oil control valve. Like I said, right here on the end is where the solenoid or actuator that's mounted to the front of the valve cover presses in on. Uh, that's it right there. It's got all kinds of perforated holes to it. And then this is your cam phaser. This is an exhaust right here. The intake is marked as well. And there's different reference marks. Uh, this is the arrow that we were showing earlier that we are lining up with the intake. Cam phaser as well, keeping them crossing each other. You got some other reference marks. And that's the other mark we made. It's got a dowel pin here for alignment when you go to line it up with the cam. When you line it up, there's a little bit of movement, not a lot, but that is your alignment for the camshaft. Uh, intake looks identical. Now the camshaft has what I call a relaxed state. The relaxed state is where the tension from the valve springs isn't pushing on it at that point. You rotate slightly towards the intake. That is pretty much the rest position for the camshaft. So when you go to reinstall the camshafts, we're going to do the same way. The four dots that we're using for the quick reference for lining up the camshafts, well once the cams are in their relaxed state, they'll be pretty much pointing straight up as far as with the vehicle, not towards the center of the head though. So they'll be pointing pretty much this direction here. And like I said, you just rotate towards the intake and when you go back to reinstall it, you do the same thing. You'll sit it there and when you get ready to put everything on, then you can rotate it back to the position where all your marks lined up. Now the bearing caps for the camshaft, they only go in one place and in one direction. Each one is individually marked. One thing you're going to notice is that they got a corner clip. The corner clip goes towards the front of the engine. And once I get them off, I'll show you that there's some stamping on there to designate which one goes where, uh, both numbers and as far as intake or exhaust. Now they're held in place with a T30 Torx. So I'm going to go ahead and take them off and start sitting them in the order that they came off and then I'll show you exactly what those markings are. This head is being replaced so these bearing caps are going to be coming with the new head so me taking them off on the old I could just throw them in a pile it's not going to matter but the uh, new one's going to come with its own bearing caps that have been machined for that head but like I said I'll show you the actual markings on them So this is one of the bearing caps. This is one of the front ones because they're a lot wider than the rest of them. The, the rest of them going back are smaller. This is the two up front are the largest. It's got the corners clipped like I told you with the squares. Also on the side, it's got a stamping. Uh, this one right here has a one eye and then an arrow. The arrow always points towards the front, which of course the corners are clipped as well to let you know. The one is that it's number one in designation in order, one, two, three, four, five, on the way back, however many there are on a cylinder head, they would be numbered like that. And of course the I means this is the intake camshaft front bearing cap. Like I said, there is a difference in size. This is the first one, and this is another one that's in order. This one just happens to be the number three. So it's the number three I for intake cam and the arrow point towards the front. So, difference in size, you can't mix them up. So now we can grab each one of the camshafts. Now like I said, I like to sit them to the side and I like to know which one's the, one, the exhaust, which one's the intake. So I keep them separated. And I keep them separated in a manner that I will remember. Now if you're worried that you got the camshafts mixed up while you had it apart, cast in here is actually a number that says 3.6L for the size of the engine. And right above this lobe here, there's an LE. L stands for left, E for exhaust. This one's a little harder to see, but there's an LI, so that's your left intake. So there are markings, it's kind of hard to see. So if you do get them mixed up, just look real close down there. Like I said, if not, you can put you a paint mark or a letter on there, I or E, whatever works best for you. But there is actually a marking on there, cast into it to designate which one's which. While you've got the camshaft out, you need to pay extra attention to the low bearing surfaces. Make sure you don't see no deep scoring or any kind of issues there related to lubrication. 
Make sure all the cam lobes are nice and rounded and uniform. Make sure there's no rounded off edges that have been damaged where the uh, uh, possible roller, rocker, needle bearings have gone out and locked up. Just make sure everything looks good. That's good. Move on to the other one and then inspect your valve train as well. Now the camshafts are out of the way. We're going to work on getting the roller rockers off. We've got a total of 12 of them. Four per cylinder. This is a V6. So that would, of course, mean a total of 12. When you take one of them off, what you want to do is you want to grab the roller. You want to make sure it doesn't have any excessive movement up and down. If there's any up and down movement, then one of the needle bearings has gone out. Usually that causes a noise, causes damage to the camshafts, and causes a misfire coat as well. So definitely inspect each one of them as well. As far as I'm concerned, as far as where they go location will not matter. Uh, they're all pretty much uniform, so don't worry. You could throw them in a pile and be fine. But just go ahead and go down the line and take all of them off, and then we'll move on to the lifters. I'm going to get just a small pair of pliers to grab on the lifters. The lifters are actually right here towards the center, right around each spark plug tube. So there's a total of 12 of those as well. You just lift straight up. Kind of take time to look at them as well. Make sure they don't look abnormal. And when I mean abnormal, compare it to a couple more. If you see anything that doesn't look the same as the rest of them, then we got an issue. Once again, you would expect a noise. Uh, misfire code as well not related to the cylinder issue we're having so just something to pay attention while you're doing and once again I wouldn't be too concerned which cylinder they came out and which port I'm just gonna throw them in a pile with the roller rockers neatly off to the side and just when I get ready to reuse them just insert them in any one of the holes Now the catalytic converter, which bolts directly to the cylinder head, is what we're going to work on getting off. Now we've got two 13 millimeter bolts that connect the catalytic converter to this exhaust flange. So we need to go ahead and take those off. It probably wouldn't hurt to spray the back side with some PB Blaster or some kind of rust penetrant because it is an exhaust bolt. Sometimes they do get the threads a little rusty. And then what we'll also work on is getting the shroud, the metal shroud here, off the front of the catalytic converter. It'll help us get to the upper bolts by taking that off. Now that the rust penetrant has been able to sit there for a few minutes, we'll go ahead and back off the bolts. Now we're going to work on getting this heat shield off this catalytic converter on the front. Now we've got one 10 millimeter bolt that holds it right here. And then along the perimeter there's four 10 millimeter nuts. There's one and one further up. There are studs that protrude through. The heat shield is slotted on this side. So these only have to be backed off a few turns and then you get some movement. These two right here, those holes are not slotted. Those nuts will have to come all the way off. So you've got these to back all the way off, 10 millimeter bolt right there, and loosen those two over there. All right, so the two nuts are off here. These are backed off. Let's get this bolt up here at the top, grab the shield, start wiggling it, work on getting it over the studs on the left side, and take it down. And we got access to the catalytic converter and to the bolts up top that's gonna help us get it off. Now here's that catalytic converter that we we're working on getting that heat shield off of. Now this is viewed from up above. Now there's a total of four 10 millimeter bolts that hold it attached to the cylinder head. Now the bottom two don't actually go through the catalytic converter. They're part of a bracket that sandwiches and squeezes that bottom portion of the catalytic converter to the cylinder head. So that means we need to take the upper two 10 millimeters completely off. The two bottom two and the bottom corners, we're going to back them off a few turns. And that will actually release that clamp to where we can actually lift up and either move it out to the top if you want or drop it out the bottom on that catalytic converter. Now one thing you got to keep in mind, we got to make sure that both of the O2s are unplugged. This one we unplugged when we took that main harness off the side. We got one further down here on that O2 that goes off to the side that we need to unplug. Once we get that unplugged and those bolts, we'll be ready to get this catalytic converter off.